Why do you think people are still not letting go of these conspiracy theories? The conspiracy theories are getting a huge lift because first of all, Kate and William were you know, being secretive and then the photograph made them look manipulative. So mm -hmm. you put those two together and that's like the ingredients for an explosion of conspiracy theories. Does it feel like um, something has shifted here? There's always been, you know, stories and rumors and whatnot, but it feels like that something shifted and that there's so much wild speculation about what's happening at the palace and the royals on social media. Do you feel that shift too? Yes, there has been a shift, but that's not the same thing as a loss of trust or even general goodwill hmm. towards Kate and William. And when you walk around in Britain and talk to people on the streets, uh, there's still a tremendous amount of goodwill for the princess and in fact, a great deal of sympathy for her. But that's different from what we're seeing here which is number one, just the sheer availability of what goes on on social media and TikTok, which in itself just fuels things. And then the second thing is that when there isn't a story, people will make one up. That's just human nature. And that's the real mistake here that's been allowed to happen. On The View today, Sunny Hostin asked, and she was joking when she asked it, if Kate just had abdominal surgery, why is she carrying such heavy bags? And if you really close in on that video, it's very clear that the profile is not Kate. And if she really did have that abdominal surgery, why, why is she carrying Walking that big, and carrying heavy bag? The bag. Yeah. Oh -ho! <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? If she had just had that kind of surgery, that would be insanity. But actually, we know she had it two months ago. So eight weeks on, you can carry five, five pound, 10 pound bags. And in fact, you're encouraged to. Yeah. Same with C-sections or anything. So that again, that in itself, unless we know that those bags were 30 pounds each, it, that's not, you know, it's not a big deal, but it becomes a big deal because we don't know what the surgery was in the first place. We yeah. saw Kate get called out um, for her Photoshopping fail with the family photo. And now also a photo of the queen that has call, been called into question and that Getty is, is calling manipulated. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's kind of, you know, shutting the barn door after the horses bolted, because <laughs> if you look back at all these photographs, a lot of them, a lot of the so-called candidal family snaps weren't actually snaps and they were manipulated. And there's a really famous photo um, manipulation of the Spanish royal family, where all the grandkids ended up being kind of photoshopped in because they simply could not get them to sit still at the same time and smile at the camera. <laughs> and so this is what happened with Queen Elizabeth too. I know you said that you feel like there's still a lot of goodwill for William and Kate and that, you know, there's a lot of sympathy for Kate. But do you think that the royals now have a PR and a credibility issue? And when do you think that we will see Kate? Do you think there's pressure now to make sure that she has an appearance coming up very soon? Well, there's a tension here. Um, in terms of the credibility issue, uh, the press has a credibility issue. And mm -hmm. so that needs to be sorted out because if the press doesn't uh, believe the credibility of the royals, that just filters through everything. And then that is a massive PR problem and they're gonna have to fix that. And it's not that difficult. So, you know, they can and they should. In terms of Kate's appearance, now the, the one thing that Kensington Palace, which is the official residence, that's how we refer to Kate and William, uh, Prince and Princess of Wales, is that they hate to be bullied. They, it, it literally sends them into a tailspin. So when the public or the press demands to see Kate sooner than they said, which is after Easter, they, mm -hmm. they put their ears back like a donkey. <laughs> and so uh, I doubt that we will. And if we do, then you know there is genuine panic in the palace. King Charles and Prince William both resume their royal duties today, which I, I'm sure that serves as a good sign for the king, right? That he's while going through cancer treatment. Yes, we'll see less and less of him as the treatment ramps up. And that and that is very understandable, that no matter what kind of cancer treatment it is. But it's a good sign right now. And that actually is the difference and always has been the difference between King Charles and Prince William. Is that actually King Charles has been more forward, more forthcoming. He's, he's actually more at yeah. ease being out in public in that way. It's interesting though, um, because when we saw the King yesterday, there were people who said, oh, he looks well. And there were people who said, no, he looks frail and he looks sick. Like everything is so subjective. What have you heard about how he's actually doing? Right now, he is doing fine. But in the next few weeks, 
he's going to, he will get very, very tired. And also they have to see whether the treatment is going to work. Uh, so this is, this is the great Halcyon days moment where, you know, everything is calm and yeah. he's taking advantage of that. But you know, he, he actually has always been known as a trier, a doer, and a sticker. And he will keep at this until he's literally unable to get out of bed. Can I ask you about Harry and Meghan for a second? Because we saw that their respective biographies have been removed altogether from the royal family's website in favor of a joint uh, biography. Is that a surprising shift to you? And what does that mean? No, everything that happens digitally is long-term planning. Okay. You know, so, so this would have been planned. They are not in favor. And in fact, you know, last year there was a sense of persecution at Kensington Palace that every time they tried to do something for good, like the Earthshot Prize, in which the prize giving was in Boston, that was the same night that Harry and Meghan then decided to have a big thing in New York City. And so it's like they feel that they're being sabotaged for no good reason. And so, yes, there is some ill feeling going on there. I wondered, well, did she, re did she reach out to Kate? You know, she had surgery. Like, I wonder if there was a flower scent or anything, any kind of correspondence. As far as I'm aware, there's been no communication whatsoever. Mm. Uh, the, you know, the well of bad blood between them is so deep that I don't think it's ever going to be excavated. Does it go back to that very time when, I mean, we heard Megan talk about this, where, you know, the story we heard was Megan made Kate cry and Megan tells the story. It actually was the other way around. She made me cry. Did you make Kate cry? No, the reverse no. happened. Does it go back to that moment? Well, the, so the moment um, before the wedding, uh, you know, where both women were in tears, they probably did end up in tears privately, mm -hmm. separately. Um, you know, in rage at, e at each other. Uh, so no doubt about that. But actually it began way before then when they were first introduced, there was that social tension between Hollywood versus mm -hmm. royalty. And you know, each one brought something, you know, special and undefinable to the table. And th there was this uh, tension about pecking order and neither one of them was prepared to give an inch. And that's when it began, uh, you know, way, way back then. That's wild to me because if it's about pecking order, I mean, Megan's got to understand. Kate has the pecking order. I mean, she just does. I mean, Megan may have had like the popularity, but Kate has the pecking order. Yes, uh, in England, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But there was also this kind of sense of, you know, Megan, I'm, I, I'm, I'm on TV. I'm famous. You know, I, I know famous people, and you're just an English rose who married well. Mm. <laughs> So there was a lot of, I mean, you know, it, you could write a book just on those two women and the and the social seething commentary that was going on beneath the surface, you know, in those initial weeks and months. Will it take maybe those two women thawing before to get the brothers back? Or do you think they can solve this on their own? Certainly, if the two women could find a way to bury their differences, they would bring the two brothers together more than halfway. But the problem with the two brothers is actually there's been tension between them for years. Uh, the, one of the things that the public always misunderstood was when the two brothers would stand out there for their photo shoot and they'd be quote unquote teasing each other. Mm -hmm. It wasn't actually teasing, they were genuinely digging at each other. You know, it, it, yeah, it looked funny, but they meant it.